Hello. Welcome to another Inspire Chat. My name is Tatiana. I am a business coach, a mentor, and the CEO of the Inspire Blueprint. I'm so excited you are joining me today on this live. We are going to be talking about a really, really good topic today. So first, if you happen to be seeing this replay, definitely, I just want to say welcome replay fam. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all for watching after the fact. Um, I always appreciate that. But as people are getting on, definitely share the link to this live as we are live right now with a friend that you feel might be in a season of pause or as feel like they just don't know how to move forward with different things. This is going to be a really encouraging one today. Um, not so much just business, but just life in general, because I feel like we all need that. We all need things that are just good for the soul. So that is what we are going to be talking about on our live today. I see some people getting on. Let me know where you are watching from. Hi, oh, my mom is on. Hey, mommy. Spirit of ULLC. Hello. Let me know where you all are watching from. How is your week so far? Mine has been going pretty well. Um, I hit another PR today with running. So I just continue to impress myself. I'm proud of myself. It's definitely something new and exciting. If you've been following along on my channel, then you've seen that this is a new thing that I've been starting. And it's kind of hard not to talk about it because it's literally something I'm doing like four to five times a week. But hello, Carol's Journey. And I am on both Instagram and YouTube today. So if you see me looking back and forth, that is why. Uh, hey, Shalina. Peace and blessings from Virginia. Hello from Memphis. Hello from Alabama. What is up? Thank you all for getting on. So I haven't even shared the topic today. The topic is, it's you can kind of get a little hint with my shirt. Okay. Got my shirt on today. The hint for the topic, <laughs> this says, in my obedience era. And today we are going to be talking about that exact topic. We're going to be talking about obedience, specifically we are going to be talking about how to embrace your obedience era. And we are going to really dive into how it's different for everyone. And obedience for what one person may be experiencing can be completely different for another person. I also wanted to share before I forget to, I was talking about this on Instagram. I'm giving myself a challenge to not say the word um tonight during this live. So if you catch me saying um, Go ahead and tally me up, okay? Because what I'm going to do is on Saturday when I go running, for every um that I say, and these don't count, the ums that I'm saying right now don't count. Uh, for every one that I say, I'm going to add 30 seconds on to my run on Saturday as just a way to be like, girl, we need to cut that out. It's a habit that I noticed in a lot of my vlogs when I edit, and I really want to stop saying it so much. So I'm really trying to actively work on that in this season. I know I can't be the only one. So I'm really, if you see me kind of like stopping for a second, it might be me trying to figure out a different word, a filler word or something so that I don't say, um, okay. So now any um that happens after this is not a purpose, not a purposeful, um, okay. So as I share, we're gonna be talking about obedience tonight. And I am gonna be giving a little bit of scripture as well because whenever I talk about obedience, it's kind of hard not to, for me, when I think about obedience, it is actively choosing for you to move forward without truly believing or maybe knowing or not fully understanding what will happen. But you decide to move forward anyway. You take the action. You have the discipline behind you. And I really think that that is something that is God given. A lot of times uh, it could be a God given purpose that you may have. Uh, it's you following your dreams. But if you don't choose the obedience in the season, then it stops that. It stops you from finally giving your yes. It stops you from achieving the milestones that you have or from touching the person that you're assigned to help. It stops us from doing those things. And we really want to be obedient. OK, and we're going to talk about why. Purpose, though, I wanted to touch on it because I think sometimes when we hear someone say purpose, it can feel like it has to be this overarching, huge thing when in reality, purpose can just be what is happening currently in your day to day right now. It does not need to be this like, oh, I'm going to be the biggest speaker of all time. I'm going to write 10 best selling books. I'm going to be a millionaire. Like those are great. You know, it may be I'm going to empower hundreds of thousands of people. It may feel like it has to be something like that. But purpose in life can be something as simple as being a woman of God, sharing your story, giving people hope, 
being a wonderful mom, a wonderful figure to the people that you just interact with in your day to day life, that can simply be purpose. It doesn't have to be something that is so big. And a lot of times just from different women I talk to, I will notice people will feel that way, like everything has to be so big and grand. And sometimes we have to just sit in the fact that we are enough as we are and we are living our purpose just simply being just simply showing up and that is actually the theme that we have in the membership this quarter is be it's all about just embracing who you are in the season what you want and what you have come from as well just being okay with who you are and embracing it and not feeling like you have to be anything other than that so it's very special in that sense but what we really want to touch on tonight is how obedience can look for you within this season of life. So as you all are getting on, I would love for you to share with me, what do you feel you are being called to? Or you may already be doing it right now, but what do you feel you've been called to? Again, this is not just business focused. It could be very much personal to you. What are some things you're being called to if you feel comfortable? I definitely feel that I was called to be a mom. I feel that I was called to, you know, do things like this platform. I feel that in this season, I've been called to move my body in different ways and get active and running. I feel called to create certain products and different things at different times of my life. There's always a call that I have. And one thing about me that I really love, like I'm going to compliment myself for a second, is that I'm a really good self-starter. And if I know something has been on my mind for a while, if I feel that it's going to impact someone in a good way or it's going to you know, help me in the long run, then I am going to really move forward with that, even if I'm disobedient, because I want to make that very clear. There are seasons when I'm very disobedient at what I'm doing, but I like to take the action and I like to see what happens because I know even if it doesn't turn out exactly like I planned, I always learn something from the experience. So my mom, okay, hey, my mom said, be a mom, a wife, a leader, yes. And you could be called to doing that in your job, in your household. There's so many things that we are being called to do and it doesn't always have to look like this, I'm gonna say, I was gonna say the word, y'all. It doesn't have to look like this grand thing because it's so impactful, the things that we do in our day to day. So as some other people share, I will continue with this. So I almost said it again. So I'm going to just take a moment instead of filling it with the word, even though I don't mind running some extra time. But OK, let's see. OK, so the first thing I wanted to touch on is if you feel like you've been disobedient for a certain length of time, maybe you've been sitting on an idea or something that God has been telling you to do for a long time. First of all, let's remove the guilt. Let's remove the feeling of, oh, I failed or I'm not listening to him or I just feel like my time has passed now because I've given up. I want everyone to just take some time to give themselves grace and understand that we have different places in life that we are placed in for a reason. And when we are in that, embrace it, understand it for what it is. And sometimes it's just not a time to go. It's not a time for us to just take off and just do everything that we're being called to. I actually have here in my notes that this is about not being hard on yourself or where you are or what you haven't started. Sometimes we need that season of pause or pivot to get where we are supposed to be. So the season of you kind of, I don't really know if this is something I want to do going back and forth. It doesn't have to be looked at as a failure or disobedience, which I mean, yes, in some senses it is. But I'm all about people being easier on themselves. I really am. I'm about people not allowing the choices that they have made when it comes to certain things stop them from moving forward. I think that that's such a disservice that we do to ourselves when we don't give ourselves that grace in order to do it. So I actually have a scripture for this because it's very, very tied to where you are right now in your life. It's a little bit of a long one, but I, it's worth it, y'all. Okay, so it's Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 11. And I just see my girl Gio got on. Hey, Gio. Oh, kindly Britt said, haven't been here in a while. Love the name and this chat. Yes, welcome. Okay, so Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 11. And I cut off a little bit of 11 just to kind of, you know. So it says, there is a time for everything, a season 
and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. So to me, the way I take that, and y'all tell me how you take it, but I read that as God gives us time. <laughs> there is a time and a place for us to be in the ugly season, for us to feel messy, for us to cry, for us to not want to do things, for us to feel unmotivated, for us to feel like we just are unsure of what we want to do, for us to doubt him, for us to go through all of these different seasons. There is a time for that. But at some point, you get to that God-given purpose. You get to the beauty that is on the other side of it. And as corny as that may sound, you know, like they say, you know, there's beauty in everything that we do. This is, to me, this scripture, this these set of scriptures is such a testament to what that truly means. Because if we are always so caught up in what we haven't done, then there's no way we can be obedient because we're too stuck in like, oh, well, you know, I didn't make it. I wasn't able to do it. So that's just a failure on me. And I don't know about y'all, but there have been times when I've been hard on myself. One of the things we just in this current season, something very small is I've been wanting to get up early. It, ever since we have moved, I don't know what it is, but it's just very challenging for me to get up early. I used to be able to get up around like 530. And now it's really a struggle to get up before 630. And this has been a constant thing for me. But I'm not going to beat myself up about it. I still get up in the morning. I still do what I can. Of course, I would love to be the 5 a.m. girly and be doing all my things. But, you know, it's just not happening. And so there's certain things where I just have to allow myself to understand that this is just the season it is right now. And of course, I could be more disciplined, but I'm just understanding that this is the season of life I'm in right now. I'm up late. I'm doing different things. And it's just not possible for me to do it all and do it well. So hopefully that scripture meant something to you because it definitely meant something to me as I was just looking up some things for this talk today. I wanted to see what else you all were saying. Okay, you are not the only one. I'm wondering, are you talking about saying that word? I would have, Eleanor, are you talking about that? Uh, staying obedient in my walk. Sometimes I've ran away from things because of what people might think. I'm trusting God is protecting and putting me around the right people in the right environment. Yes. And that is sometimes what it is too. Like if we are constantly filling our minds with negative things, things that are pushing us away from the vision, things that are telling us that we're not good enough, then we never will be there. If we're not around people that are building us up, it's going to be harder for us to be obedient. So I love that. D. Smith, thank you for sharing. And Carol's Journey said, I feel called to encourage people to not give up just in business, but on life itself. Your breakthrough is on its way. Claim it and believe it. Y'all heard Carol, okay? Claim it and believe it. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so let's talk about some tangible ways that we can actually embrace what this season is. And I had this shirt on. This shirt is actually, I made this shirt a couple months ago, y'all, but it just really fit today's topic. So I put it on. It is in the shop. It says, in my obedience era. And then on the back, it's really cute. It says, I don't even know if y'all can see it. I don't want to like, <laughs> it says, committed to the call. So I did put the link to the shirt in the description on YouTube. I'll have to add it to, um, oh no, I just said it. <laughs> to add it to the description or the link in bio for Instagram. I threw myself off saying, okay. So if anyone is counting, how many, have I said it a lot? For real, have I said it a lot? I hope not. All right, so let's talk about some of the steps that we can take for embracing our obedience era. And the reason this is important is because we don't want to continue to delay the gifts that we have to put them out there. We don't want to continue to put off what God has called us to do. That's why on the back of the shirt, it says committed like six times. 
because you want to be committed, 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 committed to the call. But in that, there are some different things that we have to do. So the first thing is to start small. I am very big on this. <laughs> we, I don't know if it's our society. I don't know if it's like a thing of being in America. I don't know what it is, but so many of us put a lot on our to-do list. And we expect that, okay, if I write down all 15,000 of these things and all 15,000 of these things are going to get done, and then when only two of them get done or none of them get done, then we're feeling like a failure. We're looking whichever way. So really think about what does start small mean to you in whatever it is that you're doing. If I'm talking about running, for example, I started small by just simply running for 30 seconds and walking for a minute, running for 30 seconds and walking for a minute. When I started my business, I started with one product, just one product. When I started deciding if I wanted to homeschool my daughter, because this was something I was teetering on for a couple of couple of years before we actually did it, we just did like one little activity each day just to see if it was something that I felt like, you know, would be a good fit for us, right? You know, could we vibe and could this work? And it was something that I was really passionate about, but I was like, well, I'm passionate about it, but I'm not going to deep dive all in. Like, let's just start very small. Start small. And I promise you that it will take you so much further than you feeling like you have to have a catalog of 100 products or you need to be running 10 miles on your first time ever running or whatever the thing is. And I'm just using examples for myself, but this can be applied to so many different things. I think that this is very in line with discipline as well. When we have a whole bunch on our list, it's hard for us to stay disciplined. It's hard for you to decide, okay, I want to have a healthier lifestyle. So I'm going to start going to the gym four times a week. I'm going to stop eating sweets. I'm going to do some intermittent fasting. I'm going to get up early. I'm going to drink all my water. Like if you have all of these things you want to do for a healthy lifestyle, I don't know about y'all, but I would be kind of overwhelmed with that list. And that's why like when people do that 75 what is it? 75 hard, 75 soft challenge. I really give it to those people because that's kind of one of those things where it's like you are literally loading yourself with so many new habits that you don't really give yourself an opportunity to grow. So I suggest, you know, start small. That will allow for you to really have some time to see where this can go. And during that, you can also figure out what is the minimum amount of showing up that you want to do. So for me, I know that if I am having a busy week, and I'm just going to use like working out as an example right now because it's top of mind. If I know that I want to continue this running plan that I'm doing, there are some weeks where life is just busy. I'm not able to get to the gym to do stuff. I'm a stay-at-home mom, so I'm home with my daughter. I can't just like go running around the uh, park or wherever I decide to go. She's not going to be trying to be following me for you know that much time. Like I can't do that. It's not realistic. And so with that, there are minimum levels of show up, basically. I don't know what else to really call it. That's what I call them, where I'm like, OK, I'm going to only do this amount of workouts. I'm going to do my rest days. But if for some reason I'm not able to make it to the gym today, I have an alternative 20 minute workout I'm going to do on YouTube. There's no excuse because there's an endless amount of them basically. And it's very easy for me to do it as tangible. 20 minutes is something that I know I can fit in. And that has been a promise I've made to myself. And so far I've stuck to it, but I chose to figure out what that would look like. So decide if you, with discipline, decide there are going to be days where life is going to life. There's going to be days where you don't feel as motivated or as energetic to do these things that you're being called to do. So already set it up in your mind this is what I'm going to have in place so that I can already be prepared for these moments. And then also, what is your cadence, basically? So we talk about this all the time within the membership. A lot of times with just how we show up for our businesses online, social media, posting, and different things. But this can apply to how often are you doing this thing that you are being called to do, which what are some of the things you are being called to do? I don't know if anyone got a chance to put it in there. but. Um, what are you being called to do? Let me know. What have you been called to do? What are you currently doing that you feel you've been called to do? I know for me, when it comes to this, for example, I love to get on here at least once or twice a week to just touch base with you all in some way, shape or form. I feel that that is my cadence. That's kind of like my minimum cadence is 
I want to at least get on once a week, show my face, whether that is through the form of a long video on YouTube, if it's in the form of me going live, if it's me sending an email out, that is what I choose to do as a minimum. But when I'm feeling good, you know, and things are going great, I'm like three to five times a week. OK, so figure out what your cadence is, how often you want to do this and start small with your cadence. Don't feel like I got to do this seven days out of the week. If you know that God is calling you to create this journal that's been on your heart for a long time, maybe it's a faith journal and, you know, you really want to get into it, but you just don't have the time. Instead of you feeling like I got to create this thing in one weekend, dedicate 20 minutes for a week. Out of the whole week, you can find 20 minutes to just sit down and think of some ideas. OK, then the next week, you're like, OK, maybe I'll do 30 minutes and slowly start to add it up because it's better to do that than continue to just say, I don't have time. We can find time to do the things that are important to us. So it can be very small, but that could be your cadence of simply saying once a week, I'm going to dedicate 30 minutes to me starting to work towards this idea that I have. I know this is something I'm being called to. I don't have a ton of time right now, but I really want to make this happen. So that is a little bit around start small. I feel like I went on a little bit for that point, but I wanted to really make sure that that made sense with what I was saying. Let's see what some of you are saying. Okay. Oh my gosh. I got kind of behind. Okay. Thank you. Y'all love the shirt. Thank you. Thank you. I love it too. Yes, definitely. It's really good too. It's that comfort colors material. So it's really, really soft. Kiana said, I was just reading this. I have been struggling with what I'm supposed to be doing. Should I go back to work, stay home and create my business? Whew, I think that is definitely a big question. And I don't even know if you're necessarily asking or just kind of sharing, but I will say to just pray about it for sure, because that is a huge decision to make, especially when, you know, we got pe people to feed, you know, got to keep these lights on and stuff. So I will definitely uh, say to pray about it and just take it one day at a time as well. In the meantime, still start to show up for yourself. Start figuring out what it, ways that you could make money on your own as well. I don't think there's anything wrong with having multiple streams of income. It can only help you, right? So that would be something I would say to that. But thank you for sharing that, Kiana. And I hope that you can figure out what will be the best for you, because I know that can be a tough decision to make. I've definitely been there myself. Courtney Rodriguez, thank you so much. I'm glad you're enjoying the chats. Hey, Heather, I have a massive to-do list that constantly makes me feel useless. <laughs> I need to start small so hard when I want to do. I know. And I... And the same way, even like in my planner, this is the planner I designed. I have it set up where there is a three tasks for the day. And then there's a section for you to write even more to do's. I've even limited that. I've really tried to just do one thing. And then if I happen to do that one thing, then the other two are a bonus task versus me feeling like I need to accomplish them. And it's really helped a lot because now I don't feel like I'm failing. I feel like, oh, I got extra time. I can do some extra things. So it definitely is hard, though. Let's see. Hey, Yvette. Okay. Courtney said, how do you know where to start? There's so many ideas in my head. It's overwhelming. And then I get like task paralysis. <laughs> it's task paralysis. I've never heard of it like that, but that is definitely true. I go through seasons of overwhelm with things too. What I usually focus on is what am I the most excited about? What is the thing that kind of is keeping me up at night? Or whenever I just envision myself doing X, Y, Z, what is it? And that kind of helps me with what to focus on first. Of course, if, if there's something where it's just completely out of reach and I'll be like, okay, maybe that might be down the line in a couple of years or whatever the case is. But typically if it's something that I just can't stop thinking about, I know that it's been on my mind. I put it off for a while. That's usually the one that I'll lean on. And I'm sure that there's probably one thing out of that list of things that you are thinking about where maybe that one's a little more exciting or really more top of mind. That is what I would definitely go with. Okay, so I'm going to read my next point and then I'll come back and answer some more questions. But thank you all for being so engaged today. I truly appreciate it so, so much. Okay, so the next point is to boldly step into boldly step into place and claim what's already yours. So I feel like this is really just the three parts. The first part was embracing where you are within your life, which we kind of talked about that. Everything has a season, everything has a time, and we may be in a season of pivot or pause, as I said. And then number two is starting small. Just because we've decided that, okay, I'm going to be obedient now, it doesn't mean that we have to take off 
just, you know, hitting the ground running. We don't want burnout. We don't want to just really stop before we get started. We want to give ourselves a chance to really be great. As I always say, I always be laughing because my daughter, she just don't want me to be great. Like she always be trying to rain on my little parade of stuff I be doing. And then she come and be like, oh, can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? I'm like, girl, let me be great, right? We want to let ourselves be great. But if we are trying to do too much, if we are not allowing ourselves the grace to understand what season we are in, then it's going to be really hard for us to be obedient, right? It's going to be hard for us to be in our obedience era because we are just so bogged down with all of the negative thoughts and just the long, as what someone said on here, I think it was Courtney, just like the mile long to-do lists that we have. So that is the first two points. But yes, the last one is to boldly step into place and claim what is already yours. And I have another scripture for this one. It is First Chronicles 28, 20. Be strong and courageous and do it. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, is with you. He will not leave you or forsake you until all of the work for the services of the house of the Lord is finished. So to me, you know, I really should make, I think my next challenge is going to be to stop saying so. I know I just stopped in the middle of that, but I think that's going to be the next challenge for my next filler word to stop saying. If you know, you know what I'm talking about from the beginning of the slide. But what I'm saying is that this scripture to me, how I am taking it personally, I feel that God gives us the space to do the things we need to do. He understands that we are going to be discouraged. He understands that we're going to be scared to move forward with different things. Anything new comes with some level of fear, pretty much <laughs> anything new. I know when I was getting ready to become a mom, I was scared. And even once she was here, I was scared. And even shoot, some days, even in the very, very present, I'm scared because I'm just trying to figure it out. So I think that it's just about us really relying on God and knowing that he is going to get us through until we have accomplished whatever this work is, this service is for the house of the Lord. So if we look at it from that standpoint, then we know that we have the space. And we have the grace to really do what we need to do. It's already understood that we are going to have these feelings because they're human emotions. We are allowed to have different seasons of life. We talked about in the Ecclesiastes, those sets of scriptures. We talked about how there's a time and a place for everything. There was one in here that literally said there's a time to scatter the stones and there's a time to grab to gather them. There's going to be a time to me. I look at that even for myself. There's a time where I pour out to people and I share all of the things on my heart. But then there's some times where I need to be poured into and I'm trying to gather different things for myself so that I can be filled up. So there's a time and a place for everything. And if you are a natural person that is always showing up for everybody and pouring into people, but you feel like in this season you want to protect your heart or you want to protect yourself or you don't have a whole lot to say, that is fine because that place is there for you. That space is created for you and it's understood that this is okay so always know that even in any season of obedience that we are in it's going to look different for all of us like i kind of open this up with one season of obedience for me might be me trying to do this 5k run right you know i want to get to the finish line on april 27th y'all okay i'm so excited i want to get to the finish line for this run but in other seasons i might not be doing anything active because I'm working on something else. I'm focusing on something else. I'm pouring into something else. And I can't compare this season of obedience to that season of obedience because it's completely different. There's a time and a place for it all. When I think about being in my obedience era, that is what I feel it means to me is I'm going to embrace the current season I'm in, no matter how ugly it might feel, no matter how much I feel like I could be doing more, I'm going to live in this season. I'm going to understand it for what it is. I'm going to take the lessons I need to take. I'm going to protect myself when I need to protect myself. But at the end of the day, I know that another season is coming. There's going to be another call for me to answer. There's going to be something else that I'm going to need to pour into to change. Like I said, there's going to be some times where I'm going to need to take a break. There's going to be a time when I need to completely pivot altogether. I still, I always bring up my biggest pivot to me was when I closed my stationary business. I never thought that I would do that a couple of years ago, but I was being called to do it. I was being called to do it for almost a year. 
but I really just didn't know how to move forward from that. And I felt like, no, this is my season. This is the one thing that I'm doing right now. What will I be doing if I'm not <laughs> doing the stationary muse? Who will I be? What will I be known for? This doesn't make sense. And I was disobedient. I was in that season of just not wanting to move forward with that because I didn't understand. I couldn't see it. And that's the whole definition I gave at the beginning of it's actively choosing to move forward without truly believing or seeing or knowing or really understanding what it is on the other side. But we do it anyway. And that is OK if we take a year or for some of us years or months to finally decide. But the point is, we got to decide at some point and we have to take the action. We have to move forward. So that's my point. I really want to engage with you all in these comments because there's so many. So let's stay on and just chat for a little bit. Let me see. Lovely and Ray said, yes, this is for me. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you for getting on. OK, so let's see. I love that task paralysis. OK, Monica said cadence, a pace of grace. Ooh, Monica, are you? You need to put that on something. I love that. I really like that a lot. Creating a planner. Oh, okay. You're being called a creative planner, Willow. That is wonderful. Definitely hit me up. Check out the videos on this channel. There are tons of them all about that. Kiana said, I'm literally designing a graphic to wrap my glasses cup, glass cup with my to-do list. This is confirmation and encouraging. Thank you. Of course. Heather said, I feel I've been called to make a handmade stationery and glassware with sassy and sarcastic style. I love that. Yes. In other words, if I let it be okay that I work slowly. After all, some people leave. Love escargot. <laughs> I love that, Monica. Monica's the one that just shared that like gem of a that cadence, pace of grace. Yeah. And I think that that's okay for us to be slow. I think when I look back at my personal journey of my business is a great example. I just feel like I'm the tortoise in the race. I really do. Like when I think of like that tortoise in the hair story, I didn't take off overnight. I feel like I'm still not where I want to be even now. Um, almost, oh, I said, um, even now, almost like 10 years into entrepreneurship, there's still so much I want to do and so much I want to see for myself. But I just understood that, you know, I'm just a slow and steady a slow and steady riser, right? So I love that. Keys to sunshine. Hey, Shauna said, share with women and encourage, especially when I'm out. If I see a mom with a child, I should, oh, I love that. I love that. Courtney said, I have big goals to own my own coffee shop. Ooh, with dedicated work rooms. And then I will tell, sell my planners, pens, etc. Okay, Courtney, I'm claiming that for you. That is so cool. So, so cool. If I I don't even know where you live, but I would come because I love coffee shops and workspaces. And if you got stationary. Like, that's definitely a whole thing right there. Calling to facilitate. Here's Monica again, y'all. Calling to facilitate healing, create clarity from chaos, and to develop habitual harmony by focusing on 10 aspects of abundance. Okay, Monica. Okay, I don't know what you do for a living, but I'm going to need you to write. <laughs> you write a book or a devotional or a blog or something if you don't already none of us were strong enough to hold up our heads when we came into this world we were not born thoroughbred horse who can run within minutes we were all born as humans how far we've come i love that thank you for sharing monica she you have a way with words for sure hey anna Okay, let's see. Feeling motivated. Oh, Courtney, you're in Ohio. What part? I'm from all right outside of Cleveland. What part? What part? All right. So if you are familiar with Ohio, so I'm from Ohio. I was born in Cleveland. I was raised for like the first half of my childhood in Shaker Heights. And then I was raised for like the second half of my childhood in Macedonia, Ohio. And then I went to college in Columbus, Ohio. So yes, I Ohio. Till I die. Okay. Love it. Uh, okay. Let's see. And then Monica said, thank you. It's going in my book and other items as my subsequent comments. I'm recovering from a severe stroke. Oh, the challenge did not erase my goals. Okay. Monica, I feel like you are such an example of 
what we're talking about tonight of just the fact that you're saying, first of all, that you had a severe stroke, which, wow, the fact that you have been through that, I am so grateful for you that you are here, you're doing well, you're on here, you're able to continue to do what you want to do, because I know that it's no small feat to get over. So thank you for sharing that with us. But you are such a testament to this example of us talking about being in our obedience era, because we could make up excuses all day about why we can't do things. But here Monica is, she's sharing that she had a severe stroke, something that could stop a lot of people in their tracks, something that could completely shake up a person's world. And yet she is still choosing to move forward with what she's being called to do. And that's what it is all about. And it does not have to be even sometimes what we originally envisioned for ourselves. It, the vision can change. And I, I love that for you. Love that for you. I'm just teaching myself to teach tools, publish my stuff. Oh, well, definitely keep me posted when you get your stuff published. I would love to check it out. Courtney said, oh my gosh, I work in Shaker Heights at a social media agency. What? That is so cool. Wow. That is really, really cool. Um, yeah, I was just there a couple weeks ago with my mom. And uh, yeah, that's so cool. It was nice to be back for a little bit. All right. So I think I caught up with all of the comments. I don't know how many times I said, um, y'all, if anyone kept track, <laughs> I feel like I might have said it. Maybe it might happen about five times, I'm going to say, give or take. But, uh, oh, Monica, you said, what do you do? Wife, 38 years, mom to three adult sons, 36 years, holistic healer, 20 years, and real estate, 15 years. Okay, you have a lot on your plate. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, and I think you're like a lot of us. We all have so many different things that we are balancing and that's one of the things we focus on in the membership, too, is that with us as women, we have this call, right? We have these things that we want to do, but we also have other aspects of life. I don't know what it is about moms and wives and women. Y'all tell me, but we take on a lot, you know, on top of working, you know, we're taking on managing our household. We're taking on really showing up for our children if we have them. We are trying to pour into ourselves, but then we also have this natural instinct to want to pour into others. And then on top of this, we are trying to create something else, right? It's like, how do we have the time and the energy to do these things? And so that is why we talk about that stuff on a regular basis in the membership on a lot of our calls is just the constant reassurance that we can do this. It can look different in this season. But at the end of the day, we can make this happen. And I think it's important to be reminded about that. That's why we do these weekly Inspire Chats now on here so that I can just continue to share with you all that you can make this happen no matter what it is that you are going through, no matter what you have had happen in the past, there is still opportunity for you to make this your obedience era. There's still an opportunity for you to say, yes, this is my thing. I'm going to go for it. I'm committed there is an opportunity. It's never going to go away. God never takes the gifts away. He never takes the promises away from you. He's just waiting on you to say yes. JM, you said, when is the membership starting? So it has started. We actually just celebrated the year anniversary last week. So it is fully up and running. Um, the link is actually in the description here on YouTube. How do I say Instagram? YouTube, if you are interested in joining, you can check it out. Uh, there is a monthly option and an annual option, but we would love to have you come check it out. Read about it on the page. Courtney said, I'm so glad for I found your account. I've been bring, binging all of your videos. Super inspiring. Thank you so, so much, Courtney. I really, really appreciate it. Let's see. Monica, you said, caregiver of two of my sons who live with disabilities. I was raised in the church, deeply scarred by that experience, ordained and find my way to help others in similar circumstances. Yes. Yeah. And we all have unique experiences, right, with that. So I completely understand for sure. Oh, Shauna. Yes. <laughs> the membership is such a beautiful, safe space. So grateful to be a member. Yes. And I'm so grateful that you're a member. Y'all, the membership, like I feel like I talk about this every time and I'm going to keep talking about it because the Inspire Blueprint membership is everything that I have prayed for and hoped for when it has come to me wanting to encourage women, be encouraged by women. Like it is just, it's, it's a vibe. Okay. Like I love it. I'm so grateful for the space and it's just, you need to be there. Okay. I'm going to continue to tell you, you need to be there. 
But as I shared, this shirt is in the shop. I actually did create a little discount code for this because I got super excited when I was putting together today's talk. So you can find the code. It's just the code is called. So if you type that in at the checkout, you'll get, I think it's 15% off of the shirt. It's the only thing that you can get it off on, but it's really cute. And it says committed to the call on the back. Also, while I have everybody on here as a last thing, I wanted to share just kind of like a answered prayer, I guess you could say. So I have, if you watch my vlogs, then this is not anything new to you, but I really have been having a call on me, right? Another call to speak, even though I'm not really good with public speaking. And I know that might sound a little bit strange because here I am on live, but it's so different speaking on here and videos and stuff than speaking in person with people literally eyeballs staring at you. That's completely different to me. So I already kind of freak out when I think about that, but I've been called to do public speaking for a long time. And so I've been praying about it because I'm like, God, how do I make this happen? I'm kind of one of those people where I'm like, if no one's reaching out to me, then maybe it's just not meant to be, you know, that's not a good mindset to have. But this is something that has been on my heart for a few years. And a couple months ago, this woman reached out to me and she has a business called Beloved Women, and she's hosting a virtual conference called Beloved Week, May 6th through the 10th. She reached out and asked me if I could be a speaker for the conference. And so it's not live. It's like I did a pre-recorded video and it will be, they have like a different theme every day, but I put the link to that in the description as well so that you can sign up if you would like to. It's free to sign up for it, but it's a very encouraging event. It's very faith-filled. It's called the Beloved Woman Week. And her thing is just all about, I feel like it's so in line with Inspire Blueprint. It's just all about being poured into, right? Knowing that we are God's children and knowing that we can do the things that we're being called to do. And there's different themes for every day. There's multiple speakers speaking. I was so surprised. I saw, I don't know if you all are familiar with Nona Jones, but I've been following along with her for a while. She's on the lineup of the speakers. Um, Melody Alyssa, I follow her here on YouTube. She's one of the speakers. So when I say that God is good, I just feel like it was a little thing for me to just be like, okay, you know, I see, I see what you're trying to do. I hope this is the start of more opportunities because I'm so passionate about what I do. Like, this is what I, I love to do. I could do this all day, just sit and talk and pour into people and share what's on my heart. This is what I feel is my calling. And I don't know what that will look like in the future. I don't know if I'm always going to be making planners or shirts or different things, but I do know that I'm always going to be in some way, shape or form pouring into somebody because I know that that is just part of my purpose. It's part, it's like a part of my makeup. It's like in my bloodstream. Like I can't not do it which I think is just so cool. So I just wanted to share that, but the link is in the description. If you all are interested, they do have an option where you can actually do an all access ticket too. And I believe you get, you get a couple of things. You get access to the replays of the speakers for longer. You get, um, shoot, what else? She has a membership. So you get access for, to that for a bit. There's like a devotional thing you get access to. So she has like some stuff you get as well if you upgrade the ticket, basically. So I put both of the links in there if you're wondering the difference between two. But come support me, check me out. And yes, that would be a really, really fun week. I'm definitely going to be attending and watching along with everybody too. Okay. I think I'm all caught up on the comments. Courtney said, we host business events often. I'll connect with you on IG. And if you're in town, when we have an event, oh, yes. Oh, girl, Courtney, you better. Okay, yes, I would love to do a panel. That would be so cool. Yeah, I definitely, now that I'm back on this side of the country, I'm trying to get back to Ohio and my family a lot more often. So, yes, let's connect for sure. Thank you so much. Hey, Yvette. Yvette, okay, you need to email me. I have not seen you in so long. Thanks. I started this with Tatiana two years ago. I'm almost ready for KDP. <laughs> oh, this was fun, y'all. This was really, really fun. I appreciate everybody for getting on with me, as always, with these chats. I've been so happy to be going live again. And I will be back again next week. Same time, same day. We'll be back with another surprise topic. But I appreciate everyone so much. And the last thing I just want to say is 
regardless of if you are a believer or not, you know, regardless if you want to start a business or not, I really hope that there was some part of this message that resonated with you. People have said to me, I think out of all of the negative feedback I've ever gotten on my platform, it's always somebody trying to say that this is fluff. Or that, that's the most negative things I usually get. Or people be like, get to the point. Like, this is fluff. But I feel like the fluff is what we need. We live in a very crazy world. We live in a world that wants to put us down, wants to stop us. We live in a world that tells us the opposite of what we truly want to do sometimes. And so this platform here, you, you can come to this platform as a safe space to know I'm always going to show up. I'm going to give you as much fluff as possible. I'm going to take my whole pillow and I'm going to shake it out, okay, with fluff everywhere because we need that. We don't always have people to pour into us, especially as women. Like I said, we're constantly giving and doing things and we need that. We need that. So I'm going to continue with the fluffy stuff as long as God tells me to. And I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for <laughs> watching. What does Stephanie say? Amen to fluff. I've actually been given that feedback by an old boss as a negative. <laughs> Man, I feel like, you know how they say, like when you try to give some, tell somebody some criticism, you start, what is it like you compliment them first just to kind of soften the blow a little bit. I feel like we need we need the soft things, right? We can't always like this channel. You're not going to get on this channel and it's just going to be like, okay, here are the five points to X, Y. Like I'm going to start off with some encouragement. I'm going to start off with some thing to get you revved up, get you fired up, get you feeling like you can actually do it before I just dive into the points. So I don't think that it's a negative thing at all, Stephanie. We have that in common then, okay? We're going to continue giving the fluff. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining. I truly appreciate it. And I will see you all next week. Kiana asks one more question. Yes, there is a link to it in the description of this live right now. So if you scroll down, um, it's in the description, but it is tatianamuse.com slash membership is how you can get to it. And yeah, come check it out. I think that you will really find a lot of benefits from it. We actually have another call tomorrow night. It's our monthly group coaching call. And it's just a time where I get on and just pretty much answer questions that any of the ladies have uh, business or even personal, honestly, like we start talking about so many things on those calls, like Shauna was saying, like it is a safe space. We talk about everything under the sun and we're all just female entrepreneurs just trying to make this thing happen. And I'm here to help as much as I can. So with that, I'm going to go. Hey, Sabrina, I just saw she got on. All right, y'all, I'm going to go. And thank you again for watching. Bye.